actually. So this idea of monkeys, and just in case people have not had a chance to listen to the podcast yet, but all a monkey is, is a job, a job to be done. So it's probably slightly bigger than just our to-do list. I, I think of it more as kind of maybe our tasks for the week or our priorities for the month. But it's what are those things that we need that we're sort of managing at any one time? What are the monkeys that we're all that we're all managing? So that's it. It's as simple as that. I think the challenge comes from this. I told you I had too much fun with the emoticons last night. First of all, we've got all of our monkeys. Oh, no, let's not do that. They disappear. We've got all of our monkeys here. And that's OK. Some of our monkeys are big. Some of them are small. Some of them are medium. And we want to prioritize our time, energy and effort on managing those monkeys. Some of those monkeys will be really time consuming, but these are the things that are urgent and important to us to do our jobs really well. And then it's these guys over here, these monkeys that create the problem. And again, they come in all shapes and sizes, but these are the monkeys that don't belong to us, that maybe we volunteer for. So maybe we adopt, we say, oh, I can, I can help with that job or I can do that. Or perhaps somebody gives to us. You know, your manager says to you, Sarah, can you can you please take on this job? And we just sort of add it into our monkeys. And the challenge is clearly that we don't have a kind of endless space to just keep adopting and managing other people's monkeys. And so let's head into chat. Give me an example now of something that that would be a job to do that kind of isn't your monkey. What are the sorts of things that come up that you think? Well, this is this is what this looks like for me. <laughs> the team monkey, yeah. So what what sort of monkeys do you end up managing where you think, how how have I ended up doing this? Or you because it often happens, I think, sort of they creep up on you, these these sneaky monkeys, and then suddenly you think, how is this my job now? So sometimes that might be like organizing things that are not yours. Yeah, taking notes in team meetings is a really good example. Um uh Ilaria, I hope I'm saying your name right. Um, where you just suddenly go, why am I suddenly in every meeting taking notes? Uh, events is a real classic one, Laura. That's a really good example. So suddenly you're the one doing all the team events or you're the one running all the meetings, Rhiannon. Yeah, good example. Rich Writing the weekly podcast description, Sarah Ellis. That's a monkey I pick up. Don't know why I pick that one up every week. Because it, it's your monkey. I mean, that's... Well, well it's not. It's a collective monkey that I take on too quickly. <laughs> See, that's part. That's honestly one of the uh, one of my top tips. I think basically is just go. Well, if you sort of don't talk about it, and someone already does it, brilliant. Uh, but that's not that's not good advice. But it, but it does work sometimes. Uh, taking other people's actions because maybe they feel like they've got they've got too much at home. Maria, yeah, taking on domestic tasks. I have actually realised that my monkey management actually definitely translates into the rest of my life as well. <laughs> um, I don't do stuff at home either. Uh, having to chase people. Yeah, so sometimes you that ends up being a monkey, the kind of the chasing, um, Tim, cheerleader, emotional support, yeah, um, people get double booked. So I think we don't want to beat ourselves up about these monkeys because sometimes they come from being helpful. Sometimes they come from, you know, we're trying to, to be a team. We don't want to be, I guess, isolated or unhelpful or kind of selfish in the work that we do. We are, we are all collectives. We are all part of teams. But I think it's recognising that there are times where we do need to say no to some of these monkeys or that we do need to say not yet. Or we need to recognise the impact of saying yes to these monkeys in terms of what are the consequences for the other the other work that I'm trying to do. Um, so I'm interested to know um, from all of you, what percentage of your week do you think you spend managing other people's monkeys? So, Helen, what would you what do you reckon yours is roughly? Don't know, 25%? No, okay. it's most of them are my monkeys. Yeah, there we go. So Helen, 25%. Uh, I, I, I actually, I think mine might be more like 10% or 5%. I don't spend a lot of time managing other people's monkeys. When you listen to podcasts, you'll see there's some pros and cons of it being that low. But what percentages uh, have we got from everyone else? Let's see what the average is. And I think they are both quite low as well, to put it into context. I can think about other jobs I've done where it would have been way higher. 30, 40 percent, 30, yeah, lots of 30, 40s. 40 percent, if you think about it, that's a big, big part of your week. 50 to 60 percent. 
30 is a bit of an average, so maybe sometimes 50%. Yeah, and your priorities go out the window, 10%. And what is, let me know in chat, what's the impact of that percentage? So where you, where you are managing other people's monkeys, what are the consequences for you and for your role and for the job that you do? <clears throat> what's the impact? Less job satisfaction. Yes, yeah, Sarah. You know those times where you get to the end of a week and you think, I've been incredibly busy, but I don't feel like I've made any progress. I used to feel like that a lot more actually in some of the jobs that I've done. You get to that Friday and you just think, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I've done, but I know I've been really busy. Um, actually getting, yeah, getting sick, Laura. Yes, yeah, so you just, you just too, you get burnt out. Less job satisfaction. You get a bit resentful. Rachel, yeah, I think I get resentful quite quickly managing other people's monkeys uh, because you know there's other things you should be spending your time on. Um, things are not, it's hard to get a balance. Yeah, that busy fool, Sarah, that's a good way to describe it. Firefighting. Yeah, I was thinking about this this morning and we've talked about this idea before of tunneling. And I think this is what can happen when we manage, we spend two, when we're too busy managing other people's monkeys, we can get stuck in the tunnel of we're troubleshooting and we're firefighting. And if you do that, if you spend time like always in the tunnel, you, you're very, very kind of zoomed in and you're just doing lots of kind of things quite quickly and you sort of don't come up for air. You don't work out, are you making progress on the things that are important to you? Quick ticks, that's a good way of putting it. Um, so it's like everyone's sort of doing, lot, doing lots of things very, very quickly. Okay. And I think it is inevitable that we're going to spend some time managing other people's monkeys. But I think it's a really interesting question to maybe think about what is that percentage for you right now, wherever you are? And my challenge to us all would be perhaps apart from me, how can you decrease that percentage by 10%? So if you're at 40, what would it look like to get to 30? If you're at 30, what would it look like to get to 20? If you're like Helen, it's 25%, what would 15% look like? And if and when you get to that, what would that mean in terms of then what could you do instead? Because that's we talk in UKHU about this idea of time trade-offs. And I think this is a classic example of a time trade-off. If you can reduce the percentage of time you spend managing other people's monkeys, you've got a time trade-off, a positive time trade-off um, opportunity to then think about, well, if I manage to reduce my managing other people's monkeys by 10%, then I could spend 10% more time on XXX. And I would try and write that sentence for yourself because that, that will be quite a propelling statement for you because you'll be motivated by the then. So if I do this with my monkeys, then I can do XXX. And that then will be something that's important to you, that's important to your role. And maybe if this is something you find really hard, keep that really visible. Keep that reminder really visible for maybe a few weeks as you're trying to decrease this percentage. And just a quick reminder of why, like why we want to do this. So we're, we've already got a bit of a sense for, most of us know this is, this is not a useful thing, but just, just a few things to bring it to life. So not only are you spending time often on stuff that is urgent, you're often spending time when you're managing other people's monkeys on other people's urgent. It's a really, uh, it's a really interesting dynamic. I don't think it's an easy one to navigate, but there's the things that you want to spend your time on. And then, you know, I think this particularly comes from, you know, if you're maybe a manager or from a team, it's like, well, this has to be done now. You know that we sort of have to drop everything. And there will be moments where you do have to do that, of course, but it's how frequent are those? If you feel like you're spending all of your time firefighting, then you probably are spending lots and lots of your time on other people's urgent. And, and what would that look like to kind of change that dynamic? The other thing, if you are somebody who, sometimes this comes from being helpful. We talked about that a bit less so today. So this comes from, I'm trying to be useful. And I enjoy helping people and I'm, I'm empathetic, all those really good qualities. But the problem is, if you spend loads of time managing other people's monkeys, you become a bottleneck. And the original work, the original article about um, monkeys was really aimed at managers. And one of the things that they talk about in that HBR article is this idea of managers becoming bottlenecks. So if everything has to come to you, or if people think you're going to do the hard work for them, or if, or perhaps if you want the control, maybe if you're slipping into micromanagement, 
all of those things create a bottleneck. It gives other people less autonomy and less freedom and means that everything sort of sits with you. You're left holding the pen on too many things. And I can think of managers I've worked for where this, this has been true, you know, where it felt, it felt like everything had to sort of flow through them. And then they end up with all of those monkeys and you sort of can't get on with your own monkeys because you need, you need them to sort of take them for a while. And so really thinking about, are you a bottleneck? Um, maybe because you're being overly helpful um, or not helping people to help themselves. There is a difference. We talked about it in the podcast between when we are helpful, can we help people to help themselves? Or are we creating a dependency where you do something for someone? And they are two quite different things. And we gave some examples of that. And then the last thing, and I think this is probably the biggest motivating factor, is if you've got three objectives that you want to work on this year, for the next three months, for the next six months, and you spend lots of time managing other people's monkeys, I think you, you probably get sometimes to one of three outcomes. Yes, you might achieve that objective, but it's going to take you loads longer because lots of your time is spent on other people's work, on other people's monkeys. So you might still get to that objective, but it might be much further into the future than you'd like. Some of those objectives you might never get to because you haven't got you haven't got the time. And some you might get to, but you don't do such a good job. So the actual outcome, the what you achieve is much smaller, has less impact than you were hoping. And, and maybe, you know, if, if you're good or if you work a lot, which is not what we want anyone to do, maybe you get to one of those objectives in the way that you'd intended, but it's really, you know, it causes you to be working longer hours, feeling a bit burnt out. So it's useful, I think, if there's one thing that you're going to do to try and decrease that percentage before we get to Helen's ideas for action, do that if, if then statement. If I reduce my monkeys by X percent, then what's the first thing? What's the main priority? What's the main motivator for you to reduce your spend, to reduce how long you're spending on other people's monkeys? Right, Helen, over to you to, to solve the monkey problem. Uh, as she says, giving it to the person who isn't very good at monkey management. Uh, but That's a perfect person. Huh? Perfect person, you see, perfect because if person. you could do it all already, then... Not very good at it yet. Growth mindset, actually. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I've got a few different ideas for action, some of which are built on what we talked on about the podcast and some of which I've just sort of thought about since because I definitely had, definitely the discussion that Sarah and I had definitely made me think, oh, I'm not doing a great job with this at the moment. Um, and Sarah's focused quite a lot on uh, the, the implication of other people's monkeys. But I actually think the last thing that Sarah talked about is the really important start point, which is like, like how many monkeys are you managing? And if you are managing fewer, regardless of where they are coming <laughs> from, whether you are self-creating them, whether you're taking them on for other people, whether you're just hoarding them because you're not giving them away to people that could help you, like how many monkeys are you managing and how could you make sure that you're managing the right ones and a manageable amount of them? I think that's a, an important starting point because it, the problem might not just be you're taking on other people's monkeys. The problem might be you're trying to do too many monkeys in the first place. So I think that's kind of a useful framing for me. Um, let me get my screen up and I have got three different ideas for action for you in order to help you with this monkey management. The first one is, I think it is important to do a bit of monkey mapping. Um, I think there's quite a lot of alliteration coming, everybody. <laughs> I think there is, from memory, there's three, there's three bits of alliteration coming. So the first thing is, I think you need to map your monkeys. I think you need to know, work out, what are all the jobs? Yeah, I was speaking. Oh, I might just mute you, Carolina, because I think you might be. I'm okay, how are you? Right. Uh, Does one mind just auto-muting? Can you do it, Sarah? Or yeah, you... I can't do it super fast. Remind us to unmute if you're not already, unless you... Okay, I've done it. There we go, I've done it. Oh, good, Sarah, you need to unmute yourself if you want to chat. Um, yeah. Right, sorry about that. Um, so, monkey mapping. Map your monkeys. So I had a bit of a stab at this. This is my first This is my first attempt. I was on here and I was doing it. Um, and this is the, 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 the one that I converted to this so that you could see. So I was like, okay, one of my monkeys is all around business operations. And then I was trying to expand it a little bit. So process and payroll and finances and invoices uh, that's the non-glamorous stuff behind the screens everybody uh, social content so like engagement with communities and social content planning I do that every week a bit of social content creation uh, client management big part of what we do We're running lots of sessions and writing lots of proposals uh, team management one-to-ones and then I was like oh strategy and, and execution 
Then I started to think, what direction are all these monkeys coming from? So I think this is a useful thing for you to do, like draw some arrows. So um, for example, I realized when I was doing this, most of these I am sort of creating for myself. So every single one of those is a Helen created monkey. Like Sarah does not say to me, I mean, and some of them need to be done. It's not that they're not jobs that don't need to be done, but I create the need to do all of those i decide oh we should have this process or oh we should review finances on a weekly basis i create those monkeys and um, this is a little bit two way because um i do create some stuff and but i also am needed to be involved in the process so there's a little bit of monkeys going back and forth i literally had a message about a monkey on social right before this session so there's a bit of back and forth here and um, this is mm, you know i um it's kind of a need of the business but some of those things like for example Sarah and I talk about the number of sessions we do and I, I automatically just pick up a lot of sessions until Sarah and me decided like we need a better review process because you're just automatically picking up all these client sessions I was just doing it by default and so that's got a bit better but I I was doing most most of that monkey creation myself and then what it made me realize is that there are some monkeys that I should be doing that I'm not spending a lot of time doing like I don't spend as much time as I would like to talking to the team and their one-to-ones which is not not great and this thing over here Sarah and I had a really good breakfast meeting this week in Manchester the morning after the thing and I thought what we did we talked about strategy we talked about execution and I was like I'm not spending any time really managing that monkey because I am so dominated by these other ones. So I think, think of the, what are all of your monkeys? Are you creating them? Or are they coming to you? And I also think it's quite useful, depends how far you want to take this, but to like size your monkeys. Because I was thinking, okay, this is probably where I spend most of my time. And is that where I want to spend most of my time? Are those, are those the monkeys I want to be consuming my time? So you will get to your own insights on this, but I think the, th the things that I would say to really focus on are what are all your monkeys? Where are they coming from? Are you creating them? Are you hoarding them? Or are they coming your way? And how much, how big are the monkeys? And then when you've got that insight, you can take a step back and say, is that what I want this to look like? Am I hoarding way more than I need to? Am I feeding the right monkeys or I'm actually got some quite hungry ones that could do with a bit of help? Like all of that sort of insight is where you want to get to. So that's kind of idea for action number one, map your monkeys. Idea for action number two is to understand your monkey mindset a little bit. So are you, for example, adopting lots of monkeys because you don't want to be difficult? Like, is that the reason that you've got your, your you know, your all these arrows coming towards you is it because you don't want to say I don't want to say oh sorry Sarah I can't take that on at the moment is it because I don't want to look like I'm not capable I don't want to say it look like to Sarah that I'm not coping with my workload and that I feel like but, but by pushing back on a monkey I'm effectively saying I can't do I do my job and um, is that what it is it's a capability thing is it that you feel uncomfortable asking for help but you don't quite know how to ask for help. It feels really, it's not about being difficult. It's, a, it's more actually about your confidence. You think, oh, I don't want to have to ask a colleague for help. It's really un important for you to understand what is the reason behind the way that I'm managing my monkeys at the moment? Because I think if you don't get to, or it's almost like the psychology like behind the monkey if you don't get to that then we might put like tools and tactics in place but we might not get to the root of the problem the other thing for me is I'll often do it some of my kind of monkey mindset is like an assumption that I can do it quicker is that true certainly not if I'm doing everything because I'm in a bottleneck situation like Sarah said or sometimes I just do it by default <laughs> it's not it's not it's just a habit it's just a learnt behavior but when you understand what's driving your behavior with your monkeys like the reasons behind the mapping when you understand the mindset it means that what you take in place which is what I'm going to show you next will be much more effective so do your mapping understand your mindset out of interest and um, I have got the, the things that I came up with you are where well, you don't want to be difficult don't want to look like you're not capable feel uncomfortable asking for help and um, do it by default um, assume you can do it quicker that that was the five things that I got to for like why I might you know be hoarding a monkey or not adopt you know or taking one on too quickly and um, 
Oh, so Kathy, that's interesting that you've gone. That was the question I was going to ask. Are there any other reasons behind like a monkey mindset for you? So don't want to seem unhelpful. So there might be don't want to ask for help, but the, the kind of other side of that might be don't want to seem unhelpful to your colleagues. People pleasing, like you want to be nice. Um, all three of them, you feel like the guilt behind it mm -hmm. reflects badly on me if it doesn't get done or gets done badly. So yeah, there's almost kind of this fear. Really useful to know. I think what is also worth understanding is whether there is a hidden confidence gremlin behind any of those. So I talk about this, for example, on the podcast that my my one um, sometimes is, is this, like I don't want to be difficult. I don't want to create difficulties for other people. I have a comp confidence gremlin around not wanting to be a difficult person, sort of the root of it is potentially around needing to be liked. Um, it is just worth knowing whether it's part of the root of your monkey mindset, a confidence gremlin. You've got to solve it at the source. That's what I mean. Like tips and tactics might not help you if you don't solve it at the source. So it's just worth, you know, if you if you, it's a reflection of capability, then your confidence gremlin might be that you're not good enough or you don't know enough. And if you can solve that at the source, it will make it be much more likely to be able to kind of put a few boundaries around how you manage manage your time, manage your monkeys. Helen, can I just answer one question from um, Ilaria quickly? Yes, please. Um, who's just asked about, uh, so she, she gave the great example of like, I always feel like I'm the one taking notes in a meeting. And, but if I don't do it, no, nobody else will do it. And I don't feel like I can assign it. I can't give that monkey to someone else. I would say, and I know this will feel hard, but experiment with testing another way of behaving in that meeting so for example maybe in one meeting you take notes for yourself but you don't take notes on behalf of everyone else or perhaps for one meeting you say to somebody um maybe you're presenting in that meeting or you've got a diff you know you've got something else to do in that meeting and you actually explicitly say to people uh, can uh, can someone else take notes today because you know I'm doing that presentation or it would be it would really help me if so let's say it was Helen and I oh Helen it'd be really helpful if you could take the notes today because I've got this thing straight after and I'm not going to have time to write them up or try and phrase it in a way where people are either being helpful so they're helping you or be clear about or maybe just test not doing it you know sometimes I think we get so we're so used to behaving and working in a certain way sometimes just trying not doing something it's incredible how then you're like oh, okay nothing nothing happened and it, and it was fine or somebody realizes oh they've not probably given you the credit for what the role that you were playing in that meeting and also they've realized that it always sits with you and so I know that isn't it isn't an easy thing to do but it's certainly something I've done before in the past for meetings and team things if you are always assuming the same role what happens if you assume a different role what happens if you don't do it for one week and just notice just notice what happens it's often um kind of not as, not as bad as we think it might be um, okay, so a few different ways in which to minimise your monkeys. The first one is to explore before you adopt. So uh, this is quite good if you, uh, you adopt on default. So you're like, yeah, I can do it. No problem. I'll get it done. I'll get it done. Actually, what Sarah is very good at is asking questions first. So that, that might just be, well, when does this need to be done by? So for example, I go, yeah, not only will I get it done, but I'll get it done by tomorrow. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> great. <laughs> so explore, when does it need to be done by? Um, why does this? Why is this monkey a priority right now? Uh, what is it that we really need to get out of it? And you might get that insight and you go, you might you might still adopt it you might say okay I get it I'll take it on next week or you might say okay with that in mind I don't think I'm going to be the right person to do this right now um but perhaps we could look at x y and z as an alternative so explore before you adopt um is one way that you can make sure that you don't just accept it by default um and maybe you can challenge some of the assumptions people might be making about is it is that a priority um or for example when sarah's talked about well i can do that if so if someone says well the reason we need to get this report done by the end of the week and you say okay um well you know why is that a priority right now because it's going to the board on monday and that's going to inform our budget for the year so it's a priority so then you might say well okay well i, I can uh, take that on if we move this other thing back so sometimes you are the right person to adopt it but what you don't have to do is on adopt, adopt it on top of everything else that you're doing at the same time so if you are taking something on like Sarah is very good at doing this okay well if we do that what are we say no to and I'm like nothing 
don't make me say no to anything but it is um you know it isn't always possible sometimes we have to do lots of things but often just the asking of the questions uh can help you not just accept things by default the i can if um type of framing is part of something we talk on the podcast about your no vocabulary so your no vocabulary is having a, a bit of a language that you can use when you are managing your monkeys so for example I can if could be a really good part of your no vocabulary because people find saying no hard. No, I can't do that. No, I can't do that. That feels hard and uncomfortable for all of the reasons that we talked about in monkey mindset. So having a no vocabulary is a, a, a way that you can respond to the monkeys that might feel more comfortable to you. So you've got I can if is a good thing to have in your no vocabulary. Um, not yet. So you're not saying no, you're just saying, I can pick that up, but I can't pick it up this week. Can we relook at it on Monday? So that could be a better way. And some people might be, oh, yeah, not a problem. Or, yeah, sure. Or, or I'll just do it myself, for example. That could be another thing that might do when you kind of press pause and you don't automatically adopt. The other thing that we talk about on the podcast is not me. Now, this isn't you going, well, that's not my job. That's not my job because that's not really helpful to people. But if you if you explore, for example, what what it needs, so someone might say, oh, the report needs doing on Friday. And you say, OK, well, specifically, what is it that needs doing on the report? And someone says, well, I need someone to go through it with a fine tooth comb and make sure that all the data in, in there is correct. And I might say, I completely get it. But if it's attention to detail that you need, I'm not the right person to do it. It's not it's not my skill set. I do know that person X is amazing at that. Why don't we go and approach them and, and speak to them about whether they could explore this for us? So sometimes it needs to be done, but you might not be the right person to do it because of what that thing needs. So just think about what's in your vocabulary as a way of not automatically adopting something. And then the last thing that I would say here is another thing that Sarah talked about on the podcast, which is about feedback versus fixing it. So I think sometimes we can, um, and I again, I do this, is sometimes a presentation will come my way and I'll be like, oh, I'll just fix it. I'll just fix it. I'll just I'll just update it. I'll just rejig that around and then I'll send it and send it off. And I don't really explain what I've changed and why I've changed it. So what happens is it keeps coming back to me in the future and I keep fixing it and I keep sorting it and I keep sending it. And actually what Sarah is very good at is doing feedback first. So she doesn't make the changes. <laughs> she will say, um, OK, well, actually, this bit isn't quite working and it's not working because and that means it gets fixed for the future, but not repeatedly fixed by her in the moment, which I think is a really useful way of thinking about things. I know we are at time now. And as I said, this is a very live thing that I am working on managing and not something that I find easy. But hope, hopefully, uh, if you have got quite a lot of monkeys in your monkey map right now, uh, between us, we've given you some things to, to help you with. Um, next week's podcast is our You Coach You Live episode. So we're just sorting out all the edits for it now. But um, if you do want to hear some of the conversations that went on in London and Manchester, and we're hopefully going to do some extended edits as well, um, because, you know, they were quite long sessions and we're cutting it down into a short podcast. Um, we're going to hopefully put those on the website as well if you do want to hear um, Adrian Herbert or James Rutledge or Lee Chain or Drew Povey if you want to hear more of them that will also be on the website anything from you Sarah before we go thank you everybody always lovely seeing you on a Thursday morning thanks everybody take care